My parents, like many of your parents and ancestors, chose America. They had the courage to leave their homes and brave the dangers and the loneliness of a new country. They came in search of freedom, freedom from oppression and want. My parents arrived in the 60s. My mother fled Cuba at the age of 16 with her two younger sisters. She graduated high school and went to work to support them. My father left Argentina with an elementary education and worked long, hard hours in sheet metal. He spoke little to no English and lost out on promotions, only to have to train the people hired to supervise him. My parents gave me the freedom they never had, the freedom to choose my path. I wanted, above everything else, to honor this precious gift. That's why I'm so, so very proud to work for the ACLU and help ensure all people enjoy their freedoms. My fellow card-carrying members, I presume you're all members and your dues are up to date. <laughs> I'm honored to tell you about our work and the times ahead. America isn't easy. Democracy is a challenge. It says to us, we're all in this together. And then it dares us to care as much about other people's rights as we care about our own. That's really hard for some people. Those who think it's unpatriotic to question the government. Those who don't want to hear about deputies being, beating inmates in our jails. Those who turn a blind eye to students living in the wrong zip code, trying to learn without textbooks. And those who believe the separation of church and state is a declaration of war on Christmas. <laughs> the government, driven by this kind of short-sighted thinking, can always abridge our rights. Just look at the right to vote, the most sacred right in our democracy. Lawmakers across the country have passed voter suppression laws masquerading as election reform. Now, at the very moment that a black president sits in the White House, millions of black Americans can no longer vote for president. Judge Learned Hand famously said, liberty lies in the hearts of men and women. When it dies there, no constitution, no law, no court can save it. Yes, liberty lies in the hearts of men and women, but for it to live, and breathe, people need to stand up for their rights. And the harsh truth is that people can't take on the government by themselves. Think about the isolation Edie Windsor felt. Thea Spire, the love of her life, died, and the IRS ordered Edie to pay $363,000 in taxes on what Thea left her, as if Edie and Thea were strangers and their 44 years, their 44 years together didn't count. What could Edie possibly say to make the IRS understand the pain of being treated like a second-class citizen? Now think about the desperation Maria Franco felt. Her son Jose sat in a cell for five years, not even understanding why he'd been separated from his family. What could Maria possibly say to make immigration officials see the injustice of holding her son. And think about the betrayal that Greg Valentini feels. He fought in Afghanistan and Iraq. He received six decorations. Now he struggles to survive on Skid Row. Even though the VA could end veterans' homelessness for him and all 6,000 vets in Los Angeles, if it did one thing, if it simply used the property as it was intended to be used. Can you blame Greg for wondering why we call ourselves the home of the brave when so many of our brave are homeless? For 90 years, when people have been ignored, brushed aside, or abused by the government, the ACLU has stood with them. For 90 years, we've spoken up for them, even if no one else would. And for 90 years, we've proved you can fight City Hall. 
immigration, the VA, the IRS, the Sheriff's Department, State Department of Education, you name it. If, if you have a champion at your side, this year with our help, Greg invalidated the 11 leases at the VA property. Leases that had nothing to do with providing medical care or treatment for homeless and disabled vets. Maria forced the government to appoint legal representatives for hundreds of detainees in California, Washington, and in Arizona. And Edie, beautiful, beautiful Edie, tossed DOMA into the trash heap of history where it belongs. And she made the federal government recognize 200,000 same-sex couples. Please join me in thanking those who make these kinds of victories possible. I'd like our staff and our board members to please stand. And of course, a special thanks to Megan Oakes, Vicki Fox, and Jennifer Fahey for putting on this, this beautiful dinner. Thank you. As you can see, we're a dedicated group, but we alone are not nearly enough to do all that needs to be done. We need volunteers. Every year, more than 5,000 people ask us for legal help. Our volunteers, if you can believe this, call each and every one of them back, take down their story, and provide them information about their rights. And we need volunteer lawyers to then fight those cases. We need partners, partners who have the courage to dream of a more just society and the commitment to make that dream a reality. That's why tonight we proudly honor Donna Gallup and Lamp for working to end homelessness in Los Angeles permanently. <laughs> And we need friends, friends who promote liberty, equality, and justice through their art, the message makers in our popular culture, through song, television, film. They can help break down the barriers that keep us from identifying with and standing up for each other. That's why tonight we proudly honor Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, Bill Block, and Matt Weiner. At your tables, you see these beautiful calendars describing our rich 90-year history. In looking back over the years, one thing becomes crystal clear. It is our duty to meet the example set by the courageous, devoted people who came before us. What makes this country great is people willing to protect our freedoms so they can be handed down. We must resolve to keep the same daring spirit that drove Upton Sinclair to found the ACLU in Southern California, that led Ramona and Mark to redefine human rights, and that motivated Greg, Maria, and Edie to take on the federal government. If you want to end the war on women's rights, if you want to see marriage equality in all 50 states, if you want to stop the government from spying on its own citizens, if you want to restore the Voting Rights Act, if you want liberty to really live in the hearts of men and women, we must pledge ourselves, our time, our energy, our resources, to ensure people have champions for their rights. Only then will we deserve to be called Americans. Thank you. <laughs>